As a surgeon, I'm often asked, what's the best diet for me to eat? And of course, that's a difficult question. But there are some things that I think almost everyone can do to improve their diet. And for me, I think that's increasing your fiber content. So what is fiber? If you're a parent or remember being a kid, there are certain types of food that kids naturally seem to want to avoid. Frequently, those are things like leafy greens, vegetables, whole wheat foods. And there's actually a really interesting reason for that. Of course, as adults, we know that our diet needs to be more than just high energy foods. We need to have a balanced diet with other nutrients and fiber is an important one. So let's go to the office and I'll talk a little bit more about what exactly fiber is. To better understand fiber, you need to understand that there are three macronutrients which are responsible for the energy that humans are able to absorb from their food. The three macronutrients are fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Fat, as we know it, are oils and substances that don't mix very well with water. They're excellent plant sources of oils and excellent animal sources of oils. Really, finding enough fat in the diet is not difficult for people who choose diets such as vegan or vegetarian diets. Protein, a little bit more challenging for vegetarian diets, are typically thought of, when you think about protein, as the muscle tissue of animals. Of course, there's some excellent sources of protein in plant-based diets as well, but to understand the concept of what we mean when we're talking about protein, it's the tissues and the, and the substance that makes up those muscle fibers that is a good example of what it means to be a protein. The final macronutrient, and probably where the majority of calories come from in our diet, are carbohydrates. And the classic carbohydrate that we think of is sucrose or table sugar. And in fact, the majority of carbohydrates get broken down into simple sugars like sucrose from our diet, and that's how we absorb them. Things like breads, for example, have high sources of carbohydrates and are ultimately broken down to simple sugars when they're absorbed. But there's more to carbohydrates than just becoming a simple sugar. In fact, fiber is a carbohydrate. And what makes fiber special is that by definition, fiber is a carbohydrate that the human digestive system cannot break down on its own. Now, many other mammals have actually evolved ways to break down carbohydrates. If you think about animals that graze in fields, they're consuming a lot of fiber in their diet and are able to turn that fiber into energy. Humans don't have that ability. Now, fiber is not just fiber. There's actually more than one type of fiber. And so why don't we go to the kitchen and I'll show you a bit more about that. Okay, so we're here in my kitchen and I have a few items just out of my pantry that can help us understand a little bit better about fiber. The first thing I want to talk about is lettuce. Lettuce is oftentimes falsely associated with being a high fiber food. It's not. For 100 grams of lettuce, you only get one and a half grams of fiber, just barely over 1%. In fact, lettuce is actually mostly water. It provides almost no nutritional value. And yet people who are oftentimes on health diets want to eat salads. The reality is lettuce alone provides very little. What it does do is it provides a little bit of a bulk. You might eat it and you feel fuller and there's an advantage to that and that you might consume less calories overall. But really, from a nutritional value, lettuce has very little in the way of fiber. In fact, what it does have, though, would be some insoluble fibers, because the difference between soluble fibers and insoluble fiber has to do with its relationship with water. So soluble fiber can dissolve in water and basically holds water in your gastrointestinal tract, allowing things to pass smoother. Whereas insoluble fibers aren't holding any water, they just exist as a undigested part of your diet and helps move things along by providing a source of bulk. From my perspective as a surgeon, 
My preference is to always encourage people to eat more soluble fibers. They help uh, things move along your gastrointestinal tract a lot easier, and they can even help lower your cholesterol. They don't have the disadvantage of the insoluble fibers of potentially causing blockages if you have uh, that tendency. So to help a little bit further, let's look at a few other items here. So this is an interesting uh, bread here. This is a, if you can read that, fully organic, naturally fermented bread there. You can see that it has the non-GMO label on it. Is this a source of high fiber? Well, let's take a look at the amount of carbohydrates that it has. So it has 28 grams of carbohydrates. And in that, it has four grams of fiber. You show that there. 20 grams of carbohydrates and four grams of fiber. Now that's for a serving that is 64 grams. So not quite 10% of this is fiber. And yet if you look at the bread itself, it's got that whole wheat characteristic to it. You can see there's flax seeds on it, for example. And the impression you would have is that this is a high fiber food. Let's compare that to oatmeal, one of my favorite foods actually. So again, it has for a 30 gram serving has 20 grams of carbohydrates. I'll show you that there, 20 grams of carbohydrates and three grams of fiber. So 10%, a full 10% of what this weighs is fiber. So relatively high fiber food. Again, three grams of fiber for there. Now, what may surprise you is I have some Orville Redenbacher popcorn here. This is buttery popcorn. And let's take a look at its nutritional label as well. You can see here that for a 50 gram serving, you have six grams of fiber. That's more than 10% of it is fiber. So believe it or not, the popcorn is the highest fiber food of these three. Now, the popcorn is probably mostly insoluble fibers. So recognize that. And how do I know this? Well, think about your own personal experience eating corn. The corn husks that are present in the popcorn are very similar to the corn husks that you have on your, say, corn on the cob that you might be eating this summer. So recognize that that is the type of fiber largely found in these Orville Redenbacher type popcorn. But if you're looking to raise the fiber in your diet and you're looking for healthy snack food, believe it or not, uh, this microwave popcorn is one of the best snack foods that you can have. So I'm frequently asked, how much fiber should I have in my diet? And that is a difficult question because nutritional science is changing frequently. As a surgeon, people with gastrointestinal symptoms are the ones that are often approaching me for diet questions. And I think to answer that, the recommendations of 25 grams of fiber for a woman and 35 grams of fiber for a man a day would be the ideal solution to most people who are having troubles with their gastrointestinal tract. Certainly, we may recommend more or less fiber. And in fact, certain people with certain problems in their gastrointestinal tract might be specifically advised to avoid those insoluble fibers because they can cause blockages in certain cases. And I really recommend that you talk to your surgeon. But if you're unsure about fiber and you want to increase it in your diet, I would certainly encourage you to find those soluble fibers, because personally I think those have the best health benefits, and increase those in your diet so your total fiber intake reaches that 35 grams of fiber a day for a man and 25 grams of fiber a day for a woman. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. I'm always creating new content and I really enjoy doing this for you.